about how I chart songs because I know we all chart songs differently. This is the template I use to chart every song I ever do for any any gig, whether it's a church gig, whether it's a country gig, a soul gig, whatever it is. This is the chart template I use, and I want to show you how I do it. So first things first, I'm going to choose a song called Reconciler by my church, Nashville Life. Um, before I change this, this is just the template of a uh, chart I use. I use this a lot for if I'm running Planning Center or creating charts for my church. Planning Center is just a database that you can put in. Uh, a lot of churches use it. They can put in their songs and their charts and the lyrics for the teams to use every Sunday. It'd be excellent. But this is the template I use, so I'm going to rename this the name of the song. I am charting. Reconciler. Reconciler. Sweet. I'm going to name this Reconciler. And this chart template is passed down from generation to generation. Now, it was actually passed down from my old church. Um, they had this chart template. They made A guy made it from scratch. Very smart guy named Jason Diva. All the credit goes to him. Um, but I kind of took it to make it my own. I have the Nashville Life logo down there. Um, because that's the artist I am charting for. And here's a key down there to help you read the chart. So you see those are split bars. One beat, three beats, push, hit, with an exclamation mark. So all this is just helpful information so you can read the chart. Now, it was not written by, you know, Jason Ingram. Well, it wasn't written by all these people. So I need to find out that information. Sometimes I type it in online, and uh, this is what pops up, like a TuneBat website. Sometimes TuneBat is accurate, sometimes it's not. Like, I would chart this song not in B minor. I would chart it in D major because it's way easier to read a chart in D major. The BPM is 20, 124. So BPM 124, and then original key is D. And then the writers, if it's on the website, just go to Spotify, show credits, Alvin Love. And so I write the last name right there. Boom. Album is, I think, Here for Jesus. Here for Jesus. That's the album title. Here for Jesus. Um, to find the CCLI, sometimes I go to Planning Center, which is this database I'm talking about, and literally just type in Reconciler, and if it's already there, and then I copy and paste it. If it's not, it's not the end of the world. Uh, the length of it is not six minutes. The length of it is, according to here, 414. We'll see. We'll see about that. But according to, yeah, we'll, we'll see about that. We'll see about that. Um, but yeah, once I have all the information, I just start charting it out. So... <laughs> So I'm going to play this and figure out these chords. One, two, three. You got a lot of pushes. I think my mouse just disconnected. Please connect back. You got a lot of pushes in this. And I know the song, so I, I mean, I figured it out already previously to this video. But it's four to five. So four split bar, five. Four to the five, to the one over six. To the push, one over three. I'm going to copy and paste this arrow right here. Do, 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 do. I believe it's that. Come on, guys. If I'm wrong, call me out. But. And on a 1 7. What you know about that 1 7? You ain't know nothing about that blues. Yes, sir. And then I'm going to delete that synth intro at the top momentarily because that ain't a synth intro. Um, start from the top, listen back, play it back. Yeah, that's right. One thing I would change, it's not a one over three, it's a three minor. Big difference, guys. You gotta really, you gotta pay attention to those differences. And I try to, um, I mean, if a guitar player sees a one over three, he might just voice it differently than a three minor. And so this song has the voicing of a three minor. So you want to make sure you write. You, you want to make sure you be accurate with your charting because people will play what you write. So not what you're thinking. They'll play what you write. And let's space that out. Oops. That looks kind of even, right? <laughs> um, I'm kind of trying to line it up with these guys. You know, like it's lined up. 
it's simple. It's lined up soon enough. Start from the beginning again. Trying to type in these lyrics. Okay, so that's a pre-chorus. So I need a pre-chorus box. Um, in the template I have now, I don't have a pre-chorus box, but I actually have two templates of this Word document. Here's another template. Here's a pre-chorus. I'm going to copy it and paste it in my document. Boom, there it is. So let's back it up, listen to this pre-chorus. So I need a mutual, I'm gonna write those lyrics. I need a mutual, spiritual. Cool. Yeah. That two minor, oh, you missed it. You gotta pay attention to that. Let's do play it back. Yeah. And there's a one as well. Sick guys, keep going. Jesus in you, my connection comes. Jesus in you, chorus, my please. These chords locked. Red comes, Jesus in you, my connection comes. Red and Siler, take me higher. Can't know the Father unless I know you. That's right. Can't get to heaven unless it's through you. Yeah, yeah. Red and Siler, two minor. What you know about that? Take me higher. Uh, uh, uh. Interlude, I'm guessing. Look at that. Uh, uh, uh. It sounds like Earth on a Fire. Copy and paste the second verse. Okay, so pause. Because I'm starting to write two minors out, look at that, boom, but I have a four up here. I believe this intro and this verse one are probably two minors. I just heard it incorrectly. Let's listen back. Yeah. Well. Hmm. I'm going to keep it actually a four. So what I believe is happening, and this is up to your charting discretion. Use your wisdom here. I believe what's happening is the guitar player, he's playing a, he's technically playing like a G minor, G major seven, right? And when the bass player, you can actually play an E minor over that to make it a D, to, sorry, to make it an E minor. So the guitar player is playing a G major seven. You can play an E, which is when the bass comes in is doing, and is doing that and it makes it a two minor. I'm actually gonna leave these as a four major seven. Um, I can get specific with the major seven. I'm just gonna leave it as a four because they, they should just know the song it repeats. And then when the bass comes in, that'll be an impact moment. Boom. You know what I'm saying? But for now I'll do Now we're gonna listen back to make sure I have these chords locked. Okay, so I'm going to write a one seven. I'm going to write a one seven because I hear it now in context. So it's hard to hear the bass because there's no bass in this track. And it lines up. The reason why I did that is because it lines up with the unity of the track. 
I think if I wrote a two minor here, the guitar player might play a different voicing. But it'll be consistent with the track. So it's up to you. You can write a four, two minor. I know I said I was going to write a four, but I think just for consistency, let's just write a two minor. And uh, the guitar player will have to just listen to the track and make sure he's doing the right voicing. Light voicing. What you know about voicing. All right, let's go to the second verse. <laughs> Second verse, ah. So if it's the exact same pre, just like it was, all I do here is just write pre, take that out, underline it, and boom. So when they see that, they'll just know, oh, it's the exact same pre as uh, before. You don't need to write the whole pre because people, when they see the box, they should know, understand, oh, it's just the pre just like before. Same thing with the chorus, if it's the same chorus. Now you can hear the bass doing like bum bum. You can hear the bass walking down right there. Oops, from the four to the five. From the five to the three, excuse me. <laughs> from the five to the three. I could chart that out, you know. Four to the five, four three. Here's the thing, guys. You don't need to chart out literally everything. I think people are gonna have to eventually listen to the song and know how to embellish their own musical input. Now, people can argue with me on this point, but if I see a four to the five, I'm five to three to six. I'm playing it like this. I've listened to the song, I'll know the bass player is moving between those chords. So it's completely okay. I try to stick to charting the big chords that we hear um, straight up so we can be accurate and excellent. Now, I might add, I know I said before, I'm, I'm not going to add a major seven to there. I might add it. You know, I might add a little triangle. Boom. I might do it. Look at that, guys. Look at that. It seems kind of extra, in my opinion. It's like, oh, yeah, every four is a major seven. I think, I don't know. I, I will leave it as a four and just understand that every four is a major seven. Listen to the song. <laughs> Try to give people as, as much information as they need, but not extra. Um, people need to listen to the track, understand it, and do well. <laughs> know about that chord i didn't have to figure that chord out that's a flat 713 it's really just a c of a b flat okay so we're gonna after the second chorus we'll transition to it's all right flat 713 all right what i try to do with these kind of chords it's a flat 11 it's a flat 711 is what that is Straight up, it's a um, C, technically C minor 11, C major 11, not even a major minor, but it's just a C 11 is what it is, um, and let me check that chord just to make sure I'm playing that correctly, a C 11 chord on piano, make sure I'm typing it out, nice guys. Yeah. 
Great. So C11. Um, let's keep charting. Simple as that. Try to get these lyrics also for the bridge. I think it's so good to know that. I'll just type in know the. So good to know the, the guy. Maybe is what it is. But I'm not gonna risk it because. Oh, oh. Sorry, I just had to take my fiber. In the name of Jesus. All right. Cool. If it repeats twice, you'll see what I'll do. Okay, so it doesn't do that. There. It goes to the interlude kind of chord progression again. What I'm going to do to this, so it's not kind of stacky like that, I'm actually just going to do... This boom boom total two times. So loop that line, and then once you play it again two times, you go to this line and then play the interlude. Hopefully that makes sense to our reader. I think it makes sense to me. Again, charting's very based on the subject, so it's subjective, but make a call and run with it. And if people don't like it, change it. So So that's interesting. So that's kind of a modified chorus in a way where they actually don't tag those two lines. And what they do is, okay, never mind, that didn't work. They do this, chorus three, so say modified, chorus three. And then they have like a vamp section where they say, Jesus, or refrain, I will say, refrain. Boom, 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 boom. Oh my gosh. We'll copy. And that's the thing, guys. When you run this, since I've been working on this for a long time, I kind of know how to do it well. But when I was first doing it, I had a lot of frustration because I was like, why is it doing this? Why is it doing this? Why are you not copying and pasting when I want it to copy and paste? Practice makes permanent. So I'll write that as the refrain, Jesus. And that actually just came out of doing this already. So, it depends how you want to write it. I know they started, they they did one refrain up, and they did the other one down. Um, I can do the total two, maybe. I want to see if that works. If it doesn't work, I'll just change it. Oops. Just change this. Okay, let's listen. So, right here, drum fill, uh, boom. Refrain. Get to heaven without you, 
That's in. Sick. So yeah, we can. I mean, it's. I'm gonna delete this stuff. This is if there was a key change. There's no key change. Um. I might write it like that. I don't know. I think that makes sense. I think that's clear. I think the readers will understand it. That's the chart. I'm going to play it all the way through to make sure nothing's wrong with it. And make sure I didn't make any errors. Chord errors. Um, It's the same chords all the way through, but I just want to make sure the arrangement's right. This is how I chart songs, guys. So this is how I do it. Let's play it all the way through again. I'll make sure it makes sense to me as well. Yeah. to this
yeah, yeah. And that's how I do it, guys. So what I do after that is I export as a PDF, and I say reconciler number chart. So now it's a PDF form. Go to my Dropbox where I saved it. I had it right here, reconciler, and then boom, right there, boom, right there. Put it in that folder. Reconcilers right there. Look at that. And what I can do with there, the PDF, is I can put it in Planning Center or whatever software or print it out, however you want to export this wonderful document you made. You can put it in there and I just drop it in there. And look at that, guys. Reconciler is there in the database. Good by Matt Mitchell. Try to buy Matt Mitchell. I uh, hope you enjoyed this. I mean, you can like, comment, subscribe. I don't even, I don't even, I don't even like run this YouTube. I do run the YouTube channel. I just don't post things on here much, but I felt like I needed to. So hopefully this helped you guys. Reach out to me via email or what, however, and uh, I'll see you soon.